Meet the Playwright is sponsored by Nick Hearn Books, theatre publishers and performing rights agents. I'm here in North London to meet Diane Samuels, whose play Kinder Transport currently sits at number three out of the top ten contemporary plays of 2010 to 2011. It's also a play with strong female roles, something that amateur groups across the country are on the lookout for. Diane, it's great to have you here. Now, your play Kinder Transport was the joint winner of the Verity Bargate Award in 1992, followed by the Mayor Whitworth Award the following year, and it's also a GCSE set text. Um, tell us, first of all, what your play's about. Well, it's inspired by the Kinder Transports, which were, um, I suppose, transportations of children uh, out of occupied, Nazi-occupied Europe during uh, the years leading up to, a couple of years leading up to the Second World War, taking children in peril, Jewish children mostly, out of Europe and bringing them to England. And the play follows one particular child, Ava, who becomes changes her identity and becomes Evelyn as an adult and how having been separated so traumatically from her family as a child in such difficult dangerous circumstances it has an impact on her relationships with her own daughter and also looking back to relationships with the parents she lost and the foster mother who she forms a very strong bond with in England. It's being performed all over the world and it's also very popular with amateur groups why do you think that is? I think it taps into something that's kind of universal of humour experience and something people really connect with. I mean, I get letters from groups who perform the play regularly saying how moved they were by it. And that is the way we have to separate from our parents, particularly our mothers. And often nowadays here in this country, fortunately, people get to experience that by naturally growing up. And when they get to a certain age, they go off. But... Um, there's something about looking at a very extreme example of where this happens when someone's young in dangerous situation, mm. which it seems to touch on something very deep inside people and what it's like to let go of your children and or to let go of your parents, mm. you know. Uh, and I think it's that. I mean, there's also an interest, obviously, in the context in the story uh, stories of the Holocaust and surviving it. I think this is a story of survival. And I think people tap into that, how, mm. how one survives these things, psychologically, emotionally, as much as physically. Now, the play is set in a historical context. How much research did you do for it? I interviewed a number of kinder who, were, who no longer are kinder. They're kind of elderly people. Mm. Um, but, uh, who came over on the trains uh, and found out really from them what what the experience of being a range of people who had very they had very different experiences. So it's fascinating to see the different kind of ways in which uh, the children came to this country, who they stayed with, where they stayed, how much they retained contact with their Jewish background, mm. their German background. Many converted to Christianity. So it's fascinating finding out about what happened to them from then. And I read lots of. Uh, reminiscences. There's a, an organisation called Kinder Transport Reunion which got set up um, around the time of the 50th anniversary which was around the time I was writing the play in 89 mm. uh, and they helped me as well. There was a woman called Bertha Leverton who gave me a lot of information. So people who, um, some people never talk about their experience, a kind of um, two aspects to those who survive. Some never talk about it and some will talk quite a lot about mm. it. Um, so those who would talk kind of were happy to help. There's a very layered and moving mother-daughter relationship at the very heart of the play. How did you combine the historical and the professional? By setting it in the attic, I've enabled the kind of whole world to come out of the attic. It's not entirely, na it's not a naturalistic play, mm. although it might feel very real at times. And so, the whole world comes alive, the world of the past, her younger self, Ava, inhabits the attic. Um, people talk about the play, that it, it has flashbacks. I get letters from students saying, you know, how do the flashbacks work? Mm. I don't think of them as flashbacks. I think of it as really, this is how this woman's inner life is right now, in that moment of the play happening. Mm. And it includes aspects of her history, of her childhood of um, her family of uh, and what's going on in the present and her dreams her fears with there's a rat catch character so it's all about the inner world of this woman and in creating inner world you can it's a bit like a dreamlike kind of landscape you can bring in everything that happens including huge historical events like mm. you know um the beginning of the war and the end of the war actually going to see a newsreel at the end of the war mm. so um, the whole world comes alive in this room. 
There are five good, strong female characters in this play and only one male, uh, which is quite unusual. So was that a conscious decision on your part? Well, I wrote the play just wanting to tell a story and, and I really connected with this character, Evelyn, um, who had been a little girl, Eva, and had, had, I mean, what she does is she disowns her young self and her mm. daughter finds out this hidden story in her mother's life. Uh, and um, I suppose when you've got a central... I, I do write a lot of roles for women as central characters just because I suppose I'm very interested... You know, that's the experience I, I connect with and identify mm. with and I'm interested in... Um, I, I, funnily enough, I was, uh, my family is all male <laughs> at the time. I've got two sons and obviously an ex-husband who was I was at the time living with when I wrote the play. And we even had a male dog. And so maybe I needed to write a play with lots of women in it to give me somewhere to have a woman's world to have a lot of women friends. Um, I mean, it's interesting, I think, that often, I don't think any male playwright is ever asked, why have you only got male characters mm. in the play? And there are a lot of plays with mainly male characters or just male uh, I think you just write what that story wants as its um, framework dramatically, and and that's the way it came out. Um, it, it, it is a mother daughter story on some level um, through generations, and so I've really focused on that. I mean, intimate relationships between women are quite exclusive of men, actually. Um, you know, women have relationships with men, but they have their friendships and their. Mother, you know, their intimate relationships, sisters and mothers, and mm. I think those are quite private often, and it's exciting to put that in the theatre, mm. you know, that privacy. Well, Diane, it's been fantastic to talk to you today. Thank Same you very here. much for joining Thank us. Thank you. Cheers. Pleasure.